Earth. We are joined by Mr. Abdenur Tommy, a political analyst speaking to us from Paris. Thank you so much for speaking to this news, Mr. Tommy. Now, Mr. Tommy, opponents of the Tunisian President Kai say, that, say they are ready for early elections, but they warned against an autocratic regime. What solution do you see for Tunisia's political crisis? Yeah, I mean, as you stated out, it's really now uh, Tunisia entered a, a crisis which is another layer to the socioeconomic and the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Now, the and I mean, the president provoked this institutional crisis, which I mean has left all the analysts, I mean, to wonder, I mean, what's going to happen uh, next and how he will process his uh, this uh, political uh, move so i mean we are in these days or these moments in kind of wait and see what's going to happen but the uh, latest uh, developments are not that are really uh, worrisome and many people in Tunisia, I mean, whether political parties, elite, and even the people are really, really uh, uh, wondering what's going to happen to their uh, uh, peaceful uh, revolution that has shaken the entire region 10 years ago. So now we are between two possibilities or two scenarios so either the Egyptian scenario or the Turkish scenario, meaning by this, does Qais Said and his entourage and the people who are behind him, it's very interesting because there are some regional powers who are supporting his move. So we'll continue and push to the Egyptian scenario, which means a coup, I mean, direct and explicit coup, or the uh, people in Tunisia, the political parties, the elite, and the uh, uh, human rights activists who have been fighting for the freedom and liberty for decades, so they will uh, <coughs> uh, face this, uh, the, the, the president's moves and stand to his decisions like the Turks did in July 2006. Mr. Tommy, the country's largest political bloc, and Nahda, has accused President Saeed of working with undemocratic forces to overturn the constitutional rights of elected officials. What is your take on this? I mean, yes, I mean, they are right. Actually, whether now everybody is blaming uh, another and putting the blame on the NADA, which is, I mean, to some extent, and to be fair to this political party, the, the NADA movement is doing anything to maintain the uh, stability of the country and to let this learning democratic process to thrive. So therefore, the other side, so who are like putting the blame on the NADA, who are the real obstructionists uh, and rejectionists to any move that will break, I mean, help the Tunisians, uh, political leaders, and notably the uh, president and the uh, House uh, Speaker, uh, uh, Rashid al -Ghanoushi, to break through to the crisis. Now, uh, and there is this kind of frontal clash between the two leaders, and like the late president, uh, Baji Qaid Sipsi, who was very, very uh, had a kind of, uh, I mean, having this uh, positive image and trying to help working together with Ranushi to maintain the stability and help the democratic process again to thrive and break through the, uh, the, the, the political impasse. So now the, the, the real question, because Qais Saeed, and we have to, I mean, to, not to, to, to forget this, he doesn't belong to any political party. I mean, he uh, ran as an independent, but he had kind of light, I mean, large victory or comfortable victory in the election with the help of the Anahda. Mr. Tome, do you see the international pressure on the Tunisian government as it has contacted with the world bodies and regional powers to assure them that the president's extraordinary measure is temporary? 
I mean, you're right. I mean, that's a good question because as, I mean, we all know, the international community reacted timidly on this on this move because, I mean, besides, let's say, the U.S. is making a kind of vague statement, uh, okay, we will hope that the Tunisians will get their stuff together and then we encourage the democratic process that, uh, that started a decade ago. But it's still very, very timid. And so that regional powers like France. I mean, France, they didn't actually venture anything in two days. They didn't say anything until yesterday. They started, like, you know, to send, like, very, very soft messages, like, you know, kind of rhetorical messages, like, okay, so we will help the Tunisians to... Uh, <coughs> to maintain their democratic process and we look for the stability. But it is very interesting. I mean, when we speak here about France, is the usual suspect in the region and also the and also the other group or the, the, uh, the other uh, tribe in this region. Mr. Abdenur Tommy, thank you so much for speaking to Indus News.